going to pray and ask the Lord to bless this service today. And uh, would you, that you're in your homes just, um, or wherever you may be today, just, just, just bow our heads. And if you're driving, don't bow your head. But uh, just uh, let's just pray and seek God. Father, we're grateful today for this beautiful day you've given us. Lord, this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, I'm grateful today for your love and your mercy that you have shown us. 
Lord, most of all, I thank you for your son, Jesus, that died on the cross of Calvary, that we may have life everlasting. And Father, I pray, Lord, as this message is being preached today, I pray, God, wherever it may go, that lives will be touched, and lives are changed, and our faith would grow. And Lord, that we would grow in our love and our faith and our mercy and our compassion for one another. And Father, I take dominion over this, uh, this virus, God, that's going around, this coronavirus. Lord, you've given us power. And Lord, God, you have asked us to pray and to seek your face. Now, Father, we pray, God, against the enemy. We pray against uh, everything that is against you, Lord. We pray, God, that you would just move by your spirit. And Lord, we pray that your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to preach a few moments this morning about a subject that um, is kind of kind of ironic, really, because what happened was I think I was thinking about the subject, stay strong. And uh, I, I heard a song this week about staying strong. And I went couple, uh, I past a couple of businesses this week, and, and there's signs out there that says, stay strong. And I said, Lord, you must be speaking to my heart. See, I believe that God speaks to different people, different ministers, one may even have a similar message, but God moves in different ways in different churches. If, if not, then there would only have been one letter to the seven churches in the book of Revelation. But each church received a letter. So different churches have different personalities. Things are going on differently in different churches because different pastors have different personalities. Different pastors preach different ways. And so I just pray that God, see, I don't want a sermon. I want a message from God. And I see God. And I say, Lord, I, I want the message of the hour. I just don't want a sermon. I want a message. I want a message from God, from heaven, to to touch your people's lives. And I know the word touches people's lives, but I want a specific message from you, God. And I believe that God spoke to my heart about staying strong this week. We're going to go to Ephesians uh, 6 chapter, if you would. We're going to give you a, a minute there to get your Bibles, to go to the 6th chapter of the book of Ephesians. Ephesians is a strong book. It tells us who we are in Christ. A couple of places in Ephesians tells us that we are sitting together with Jesus in heavenly places. So we are somebody in Christ. And there was different things that Paul was t saying up to this, this point in uh, Philippians or uh, Ephesians, getting ahead of myself, Ephesians, uh, the sixth chapter. And I urge you to read Ephesians this week. There's only six chapters. It won't take you very long. If you, if you just read a chapter a day, in six days you'll have the whole the book of Ephesians read. But also study what Paul is saying in each chapter. Paul is distinctly talking to not only to the Ephesian church, but also to the church, us today. And it's ironic, you'll find that the first church that John dealt with, or Jesus dealt with in the book of Revelation in the second chapter, the first church that Jesus dealt with was the church at Ephesus. Now, this book was written to that church and also to us, but it was written directly to that church in Ephesus. And when Jesus was talking to the church at Ephesus there in the second chapter of the book of the very first church that Jesus deals with, and he said this, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against you because you have left your first love. How can you leave something that you never had? There's a lot of churches preaches you can do anything you want, just live the way you want. You're okay with God. But I, I, I told someone this last summer, I said, you need to read the second chapter of the book of Revelation when it says, you have left. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against you. You have left your first love. 
See, we leave Jesus out of the equation many times. I believe things are coming up on this world is because we have left Jesus out of the equation. See, Jesus wants to be in the middle of everything in your life. He was in the middle, he was in the middle of the two thieves. And one of them went with him to paradise one day. On the cross, he was in the middle. He went into the midst of the earth. That mist means middle, center of the earth. Where two are gathered, the center uh, gathered in my name, I am in what? The midst of you, in the center. When Jesus went to heaven, he's on the right hand of the Father, and where's he at? He's in the center. He is making intercession for us to the Father. So Jesus wants to be in the middle of your marriage and your children and your relationship with other people, on your job, wherever you go, Jesus wants to be in the equation. Jesus wants to be in the middle of your life. When you're over, over at next door or somewhere with your friends, I know it might not be happening right now, but do you act the way they act? I know a, a church that after service one Sunday afternoon, the pastor showed up with a keg of beer. Who would want to sit under a pastor that drinks beer and gets drunk? Come on. You may be, you may be saying, well, I, you're preaching pretty hard this morning. Well, the Lord spoke to my heart this week about what's happening is the reason things come up on this earth is because what happens is this. We have left God out of the equation. Money has become our God. Entertainment has become our God. Sports have become our God. And what happens is those things keep us out of church many times. And the Bible tells me to forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as you see the, the day approaching or as some is, but as you see the day approaching, what's happening is as time goes, we get farther away from God. But I believe God allows things to happen. I preached this a couple of weeks ago. Well, the devil done it. I've heard pastors say, well, the devil done it. Or, well, God did it. It doesn't matter. I know that if you look at 2 Chronicles 7, 13, that God does sin pestilence. That is what we are in right now, a pestilence. And he goes on to tell us, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek their, my faith in terms of wicked ways, then he said, heal her from heaven, and he healed our land. So it's up to the Christian today to change things. We can change things. If we'll humble ourselves before God and pray and seek his faith and turn from our wicked ways. What is a wicked way? That's our way. The way that we want to do things. There is a spiritual famine in the world today. I said there's a spiritual famine. God's people are dry and thirsty. Spiritually and spiritually dead. We need the living water and the bread of life in our lives. The God of America, the gods of America, I'm talking about the little G, have taken away us from the true and living God. And if you look through the word of God, when people started serving other gods, God would do something to cause them to draw back to him. Israel turned to other gods many times, and there was famines, and there was, uh, they, they went into captivity, and uh, some died, and uh, different things that took place. And what happens is God allows things to happen to us that call us back to be strong in him. Some reason, the church at Ephesus turned their back 
on the Lord because he said, you need to read it. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against you. You have left your first law. He didn't say lost it. He said you left it. You left it. It's like leaving your phone somewhere and you know where it's at. And you got to go back and get it. Jesus said to repent and go back and do your first works over again. Paul was talking to the church of Ephesus. And he said this in verse 10. Finally. The word finally, I think, is used about eight or ten times in, in, uh, in the New Testament. Finally. What do you mean by finally? After you heard all the scriptures uh, or the, the, the book that I've written to you, finally, he says, my brother, my sisters, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his strength. God wants you to be strengthened today. He wants you to be strong in him. He wants you to increase in strength. And he goes on to tell us, as we continue here, and he says this, put on the whole armor of God. He didn't say put on the armor, uh, the armor of God. He said put on the whole armor of God. There's some armor that we don't want to put on. But in order to fight the wiles of the devil and the schemes of the devil, we have to put on the whole armor of God. Let's, let's read here. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. What is this? What's the wiles? It means, means his plans, his schemes used to deceive, entrap, enslave, and ruin the souls of men and women. And that is his desire, whatever he can do, whatever small G he can get for you to serve and to draw you away. He doesn't care if you continue to go to church. Just as long as you don't get strong in God. He wants you to be strong in Jesus wants you to be strong in him that you may be able to come against or stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Satan has everything in order. He tried to take after God. God's got everything in order, but Satan's got his plan in order also. But God's plan will, has given us the power to overcome the plan of the enemy because he tells us here. The Bible tells us not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. He said, wherefore, verse 13, wherefore taken to you the whole, there it goes again, that word, the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand or withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Church, we are living in an evil day. It seems like Satan has got control of everything, but let me tell you something. Things are going to change. And I believe when things changes, God's people are going to be stronger than ever before. Because really, there's nothing we can do about it right now instead of praying. The only thing we can do is pray, uh, pray and seek God. That's the only thing. It's going to take God to turn things around. It's going to take God to turn your business around. And God will bless your business. God will bless your job. You will go back to work because you belong to God. He is faithful to you. Don't get negative and don't get down and out and don't get weak in your faith. Stay strong. That's what this message is about today. Stay strong. This may be a two-part message because I got a lot. I've been studying all week. I've been studying since Monday till just a few minutes ago. Stay strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Don't let the devil come into your home and cause division and confusion and fighting and money problems and all the different things. Trust God. 
God will make a way where there seems to be no way if you'll trust him. Seek him and you will find him. Those that seek him and trust him and diligently seek him, he will make a way for you. It's impossible to please God without faith. For we must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seeks him. We got to seek God. Husband, you got to seek God. Wife, you got to seek God. You got to seek God for your family. You got to seek God for your next door neighbor. The more next door neighbor is more important right now that's one of some saved than your job. Why don't you, why don't you be, uh, why don't you let God take care of you and you take care of what God wants you to do? God is using this time for us to reach lost people. That's what it's all about. That's why these things come into place. He said this, how I'm going to stand. I'll tell you how to stand. It says this, stand. There's that word stand again. Stand firm. I will not be moved. Like a tree that is planted by the water, I shall not be moved. I'm going to stand for Christ. I'm going to stand for righteousness. I am going to stand up for the things of God. God will take care of me. God will meet my needs. He is my provider. And he'll make a way where there seems to be no way. I don't care if somebody comes knocking on your door and says, I'll get, here's $1,000 for you. I've already seen it happen. I see one time when we took our first church in Orofino, Idaho, we had nothing. It took us everything to get there from here. We took our first church. Our first service that Sunday morning was $12 and something. My wife said $7. I said $12. It doesn't matter. It's not too much when you got four kids and a dog and a wife. You talking about discouraged? Or I could have got discouraged. Then two weeks later, our car broke down. No car. So we're walking everywhere. And I'm sure people were pointing to that pastor and his family walking everywhere. What's going on in their lives? We had no food. We had no money. I had no car. Nothing. But I preached the word anyway. I didn't give up, and I didn't call somebody and say, well, we need some money. We go, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to put up with this. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. No, no. I believe God put us there. And we stayed faithful to God. About a week later, there was no place to put food in our refrigerator or on the porch. About two weeks, about two weeks after this took place, I had two cars in my front yard given to me. God is a God that will take care of you if you will trust him and believe him. Don't give up on God. Stay strong in your faith. Be strong in him and the power of his might. Paul was talking to the Ephesus church, but yet you'll find they walked away from God. I've heard a lot of ministers say, no, I don't believe. Well, yes, you, you, you need to read it and see what the word says itself. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against you. You left your first love. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with the truth, which is the word. The word will give you the truth. Your next door neighbor won't give you the truth. Those that are unsaved will not give you the truth. They want you to act like them. You've got to be different than they are. My God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory. The only way that you can have the truth is that you receive the truth. And the truth is in the word of God. You need to study the word of God and see what God has done for each one throughout the word of God. See, God, the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same God that Abraham's uh, back in Genesis served is the same God we serve today. The same God that Elijah served is the same God that we 
serve today. Ravens came and fed Elijah. I'm sure some of you are saying, Lord, send the ravens. Well, they'll be there. God will make a way. Stand before having your loin girt about with the truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Second Chronicles 7, 14. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their unrighteous ways, their evil ways. See, we want God to move, but we want to live the way we want to live. God is doing something, church, in the world. God is doing something, church, in the United States of America. God is doing something in here in Central Point, Oregon. It doesn't matter where you're at. God is moving. And we need to take the advantage of what God is doing in our lives to draw others to the kingdom of God. And that's what it's all about, is the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things be added unto you, Matthew 6, and his righteousness. There's too many out there just saying, I can do what I want to do and still serve God. And God has said, no. Well, I can't be righteous. Oh, yes, you can. It's right standing with God. Let me tell you how. Let me tell you how. Righteousness in verse 15. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We walk in the word, we walk in peace with God. I want you to notice each part of the body is covered here. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darks of the wicked. I was reading about David this week in the 17th chapter of 1 Samuel. And I was thinking about, here is a young man at 17 years old that was going to meet up with a giant called Goliath. And I started reading that story again, and I, I looked at what David's life was like before the giant. David was a shepherd, shepherd boy. And he... he there was a lion and a, a bear that tried to take the sheep, and he fought both of them off. Matter of fact, the one of them, he took him by the beard. I don't know how he slew him, but he, took, he got pretty close to him to get his beard. So I said all that to say this. David's faith was already strong because of the circumstances that took place in his life as a shepherd. And some of us, our faith was not strong when this came up on the world. But I'm here to tell you this morning, get stronger and stronger in God each day. Stay strong in your faith. Trust God and God will see you through. Above all, taking the shield of faith where he should be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. One more. And take the helmet of salvation. The helmet covers the head. I said the, 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 the helmet covers the head. It covers the ears, the eyes, the nose, the mouth. What are you saying? We need to be careful of what goes into our ears. Negative thoughts produces negative thoughts. Negative speaking produces negative speaking. When things that we see we should not be looking at causes us to get it in here. The things we speak come from here. And the things we speak are reactions of things that has 
then come in here. If it's of the world, we're going to speak the world. If it's of God, we're going to speak the things of God. We need to be careful. But see, the helmet of salvation, there is no salvation. You can put all the other parts on, but it all comes down to this, the helmet of salvation. Without no salvation, nothing's going to change in your life. But when you put on the helmet of salvation, you'll know that you need the rest of the armor. One more thing, and then we'll be closing. I may not be finished with this. And the Lord spoke to my heart just a few minutes ago before I preached. Saul wanted to put his armor on David, and it wouldn't fit. I'm talking about literal, literally his, 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 Saul was a big man. And he gave it to David to wear. But he could not approve it, prove it. It, it, it wouldn't fit him. And the Lord spoke to my heart. The armor that is here fits each one of us. I don't care if you're seven years old. 80 years old or 100 years old or 50 years old. This is the same heaven, uh, the same, same armor that each one of us has got to put on. And can I say something else? It says to put it on. I don't see no place in the word of God where it says to pull it off. When you go to sleep, you got it on. You got your armor on. Don't take your helmet off at night. You probably have some pretty bad dreams. Keep your helmet on. Keep your salvation on. Keep your mind pure. Keep your mind on the things of God. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the message this morning. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that you have given me to preach your word. Lord, I love your word with all my heart. I love your truth. Seek the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I am the way, the truth, and the life. The truth is in the word of God. And Father, I pray for each one this morning that are listening, or that will listen to this message. I pray, God, that they would humbly bow before you today and ask you to come into their hearts. Lord, this is, a, this is trying times. Trying times. But God, trying times is nothing to you. Is there anything too hard for you? No. God, you will make a way. You, you will move in this situation in people's lives because you know every situation there is. And God, this too, comes. I know I've already said it, but this too shall come to pass. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy. Thank you for this day. We ask, Lord, you bless, continue to bless your people, continue to move in your, their lives. And if you're out there this morning without Jesus in your heart, I pray that you would just, just bow your heads right now and say, Lord, come into my heart. I need you. Lord, I've drifted afar off. And I want to come back to you, Lord. I want to be strong in the Lord. And in the power of your might. And you can't be strong in the power of your own might. You got to be strong in the power of his might. And Father, I give you praise. I give you honor. and give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. See you next week. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From
Jesus, you're the center, and everything revolves around you, Jesus, you at the center of it all. Jesus, be the center. beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus, cause nothing else matters, nothing in this world will do. Oh, cause Jesus, you're the center, and everything revolves around you, Jesus, you at the center of She 